dear brothers and sisters today i would like to share my thoughts on the topic affairs don't start in the bedroom they start in the mind affairs don't start in the bedroom they start in the mind this topic is very important particularly in today's society in today's world this topic is necessary is important for teenagers for youngsters for newly married for couples who have been married for a long time and even for senior citizens why is this topic so important we are seeing that marriages are collapsing families are breaking couples are not able to adjust and live together the whole society the whole family structure is crumbling so this topic is very pertinent affairs in this context are the extra marital relationships one has with members of the opposite sex most people do not realize that they have landed into an affair or that they have landed into an inescapable situation a quagmire until they are deep into it and then they wonder how they landed into that quiet mind the only way to get rid of this temptation the only way to overcome tempting situations where an affair may start is to be firmly rooted in the word of god and to always run to our lord whenever we face tempting situations in the 11th chapter of second samuel king david's blunder of having an affair with bathsheba uriah's wife did not start in the bedroom it started in his mind when he was walking in the terrace of his palace all of us know the popular saying an empty mind is devil's workshop the same happened in david's life also at a time when kings go to war david stayed behind and his empty mind made him to lust after bathsheba wife of another man don't listen to your peers don't listen to others don't listen to anyone say real people live on the edge real people flirt with the danger i tell you the truth real men know their limitations real men use the common sense given by god and don't step into dangerous situations couples are always advised to be very careful about having close friends of the opposite sex because 
most of the affairs started as friendships that crossed the line. They start as friendships, but somewhere down the line, they cross the unseen line and they land in trouble. How can we know that we are into an affair or we are landing into an affair? When you subconsciously feel that your needs aren't being met, when you are having conversations you wouldn't want your spouse to see or listen, when you are dressing to impress a specific individual other than your spouse, when you try to create opportunities to be alone with someone other than your spouse, when you delete text messages or emails from someone because you don't want your spouse to read or see them, when you are having romantic and or sexual fantasies about someone other than your spouse, and when you are comparing your spouse constantly to this other individual, or even when you feel that your marriage is not threatened, it is a clear warning that you are stepping into dangerous territory. What does the Bible say about preserving the sanctity of marriage? We have to keep in mind that God created man in his own image. That means we have to reflect God. Let us read Genesis first chapter verses 27 and 28. Genesis first chapter verses 27 and 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So when we look at these verses, when we read these verses, we understand that God created us in his image and he is a perfect God, he is a pure God. There is no blemish in him. We have to reflect his image. When we read Genesis 2nd chapter 24th verse, Genesis 2nd chapter 24th verse, it says, They are no longer two but one. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So this clearly says that, a man and a woman, husband and wife, are no more two but one. And they have to be like that. And Hebrews 13th chapter 4th verse says that the marriage bed must be undefiled. It says, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But warmongers and adulterers God will judge. So whoever commits adultery, whoever defiles the marriage bed will be judged by God. The ESV version of the Bible is more clear. It says, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. 1st Corinthians 60, 6th chapter verses 15 to 20 1st Corinthians 6th chapter verses 15 to 20 read like this Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? 
Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are brought, bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. So it's very clear that sexual immorality, adultery is sinning against God because we are one spirit with God. Ephesians 5th chapter 25th verse says that we have to reflect Christ's love, that husbands have to reflect Christ's love. It reads, Husbands, Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. In the 33rd verse of the same chapter, we read, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. And all of us know what is written in Matthew 19th chapter, verses 4 to 6. Matthew 19th chapter verses 4 to 6 command us that we should not separate what God has joined. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and their twain shall be one flesh. Therefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. In Luke's Gospel, 16th chapter, 18th verse, Luke's Gospel, 16th chapter, 18th verse, we know that divorcing and remarrying is adultery. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And he who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. Now the question arises, what to do when we fall into temptation? We may or may not have crossed that line, but what to do under such circumstances? We have to remember that God's grace is sufficient. God invites us to come back to Him. This is the gift of grace. Secondly, we have to forgive our spouses. Ephesians 4th chapter 32nd verse says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. So if our spouse has succumbed to the temptation, we have to forgive our spouse if he or she comes and tells us and repents. We have to do our best to forgive and together walk with God. When we turn back to our Father, He will run to us with open arms. Let us learn from the prodigal son's story. If you read Luke's Gospel, 15th chapter, 20th verse, we come to know how the father ran and welcomed his prodigal son. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him.
we should always remember what is written in Romans 5th chapter 8th verse. Romans 5th chapter 8th verse tells us that God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Dear brothers and sisters, let us all be firmly rooted in the Lord and never give a chance to the evil one to plant immoral thoughts in our hearts, in our minds. Let us pray that God would give us the discerning spirit to nip the bud of temptation in its infancy. May God bless this word. Amen.